ESPN NFL insider Dan Orlovsky believes that Justin Fields will be an MVP candidate in 2023. That is going to be the bulk of today's show. Welcome into Chicago Bears Now. I am Harrison Graham. Could Justin Fields take a big enough leap to be in the MVP conversation? We will explore that, kind of break down what Orlovsky said on ESPN's Get Up. But first, join the Nodi gang here at Bears Now. We've gotten a lot of new subscribers recently, and or if you haven't subscribed, that's the first step to doing so. If you follow these three steps, you can join the Nodi gang. Step one, you have to subscribe. Hit that subscribe button here on the channel. Step two, click the notification bell. Uh, and then after you click that bell, select all. I think it'll default to personalized. If you select all, you know what that'll do for you. Every single time we go live, every single time we publish a video, you will be sent a notification on your phone that we have published a video or gone live. So join the Nota gang here at Bears now. Okay, here's Dan Orlovsky. Uh, a few different quotes we'll go through today from him uh, on Justin Fields. He says Fields is going to be in the MVP conversation this season. I said that last year and everybody mocked me. The Chicago Bears had the number one pick. They were terrible last year. The only reason that they were actually in games was because of Justin Fields. Remember, one and eight and one score games last year. Fast forward to this year. Their general manager, Ryan Poles, has done a couple of things. Number one, the offensive line has gone from a weakness to a potential strength. The addition of Darnell Wright, Nate Davis, they brought over in free agency. Number two, DJ Moore. There's finally some decent talent on the outside that he's going to have a chance to throw to. And then three, the growth that he is going to have. Basically saying, year three, year two in this offense should take a natural jump himself in addition to the talent around him. Uh, I'll just say this. Justin Fields has enough help around him now to take a big leap this year. Now, I'm not necessarily going to go as far uh, as Dan Orlovsky and declare that he will be an MVP candidate. I could see him being a dark horse candidate. Like, you know, like when we get into preseason, the training camp that time of year, there's going to be articles of dark horse MVP candidates, and Justin Fields will be a trendy one. I can promise you that. Team uh, Writers, analysts, a lot of people are going to uh, kind of throw him in there. Orlovsky's been on this for about a year last year – or. Uh, about a year now, and he's referring to that one-month stretch when Fields in this offense averaged 30 points per game and he was just going off. So we've seen him do it with well below average talent. Now he's got talent. He knows the playbook better. He should be more comfortable. A lot to explore. It's a big leap, but I do think he should at least take a big step forward. Whether that means he's an MVP candidate, that remains to be seen. What do you guys think? This will be the pen comment on today's video. Will Justin Fields be an MVP candidate this season? Type Y for yes, type N for no. If you get hit with that YouTube ad break, go ahead and reply right there with a Y for yes or N for no. Off-season improvements, and obviously Rolovsky uh, has referred uh, to this a little bit here. Uh, you trade for a number one wide receiver in DJ Moore. This was not a good wide receiver market in free agency. Ryan Poles recognized that. He mentioned that going all the way back to the Chase Claypool trade that he knew free agency this year was not going to have great options. DJ Moore was by far the best receiver that was gettable uh, this offseason, unless you want to mention DeAndre Hopkins, but he's older, his contract's tougher. With where the Bears are, trading for Moore, who's 25-26, makes way more sense than DeAndre Hopkins. Uh, you get him on board. Uh, three straight 1,100-yard seasons uh, last year. Numbers were a tick down, but the QB play uh, was even more of a mess. And there's no doubt Justin Fields is the most talented quarterback he's ever played with, not necessarily meaning he's a top-five quarterback or something like that. But when you factor in what he's had in Carolina, you bring him in here to help Fields, Fields can help him, that should be good. Another offseason improvement. Offensive line has improved at three positions with two additions and then uh, just uh, naturally at the center position overall. Uh, Nate Davis, you see him there with the photo. You sign him in NFL free agency to come play right guard. You slide Tevin Jenkins over to left guard. Uh, Darnell Wright uh, at right tackle. Even if he's just an average rookie, uh, that's an improvement from what you had in Larry Borum, who played most of the year, and a little bit of Riley Reef, who's over the hill. Uh, and then obviously Cody Whitehair and or Lucas Patrick at center, that is better than Sam Mustafer by default because Mustafer stinks. Just give me average offensive line play, league average. If this is a you know, the 18th offensive line unit in the NFL, I'll take it because you've been a bottom five offensive line uh, for several years in both of Justin Fields' years. Uh, that's not even up for debate. Uh, so give me average play, top, top 15, top 20 unit. Uh, that would be uh, a huge improvement. 
Okay, uh, depth additions at skill spots. So obviously you're talking about DJ Moore, you get that top flight type of weapon, uh, but the Bears have done a good job of finding value uh, in the free, in free agency and in the draft to add some depth pieces. You draft Roshan Johnson in the fourth round. You sign Deontay Foreman for one year and three million bucks after he ran for almost 1,000 yards last year with Carolina. Tyler Scott in the fourth round, one of the best value picks in the draft based on most NFL draft big boards. And then Robert Tanyan, who's been a good red zone option in the past for Green Bay. He signed for, I think, two and a half million bucks to be a tight end two behind Cole Komet. Uh, you get some quality depth at all three skill position groups on your offense. Uh, and then year two in Getze's system. This isn't an offensive improvement, but it should be an easy way for fields to improve. Uh, they say a couple of things. Year three is the big year uh, for quarterbacks in the NFL. It's year three for Fields. It's year two in this system. So maybe the big, big, big leap is going to be the next year because his rookie year was almost a wash. But this still should be a time for Justin Fields to take a pretty big step forward, in my opinion. Luke Getze recently on Justin Fields says where he was at this time last year to where he is now. I think he's just light years ahead of where he was. And that makes sense because last year this time he's scrambling on the fly to learn a new system. They really were working with his mechanics to kind of shorten that arm release, and I'm sure they're still working on the footwork and some of the mechanical stuff uh, this offseason as well, but he should have a much better feeling of the offense as a whole. Obviously did some good things last year. You know, the passing stuff, you want that to improve. There's no doubt about it. I think the TD interception ratio was adequate considering what he had around him. You're looking for the volume to go up. You're looking for the completion percentage to go up. More reliable weapons, more time to throw, more comfort, uh, comfortability in this system. That should naturally lead to better play, and if it doesn't, that's not a good thing, and we could be having a different conversation this off this next offseason. We know we can run, obviously. More from Orlovsky here. Everyone continues to say, follow the Jalen Hurts model for the style. No. Justin Fields' season should look a lot like what Josh Allen's second season did that last half. I remember everyone talking about Josh. I think his last 11 games of, the, of his second season, he went for like 18 touchdowns with three picks, and you saw, oh, it's starting to take off. That's what this season should look like from start to finish for Justin Fields. So I took a look at the final 12 games because this was based on Orlovsky's TD interception ratio. He mentioned uh, what it was, actually 17 to 3. Uh, but you look at what he was able to do. Obviously, I think the completion percentage will be higher. Fields already eclipsed 60% last year, uh, but uh, took care of the football. Obviously, uh, Allen's a capable runner as well. And then Allen really took off that next year when he got digs. And hey, Justin Fields got DJ Moore this year. So there's no reason to think why he can't take a ma major leap. The point in all of this is, is whether or not he's actually going to be an MVP candidate, because a big part of being an MVP candidate is you've got to win a lot of games too. And I think the Bears will win more than last year, but I'm not going to predict a 13-4 and four team or something like that. And I don't think, you know, an eight- or nine-win team, if the Bears somehow get there, is going to win you MVP. But regardless of all that, it's time for him to take off. It's time for him to really put his uh, foot forward and be like, yeah, maybe I'm not an MVP quarterback yet, but I'm clearly the answer here in Chicago. I'm clearly this team's franchise quarterback because I think we all think that. I certainly think that. I'm probably higher on fields than most people are, but even I'm acknowledging, hey, we need to see more. Ryan Poles did his job this offseason. He got good pieces around you offensively. Uh, it's up to you in this coaching staff and these players to make it work. But if Fields is that dude, he's got enough to make it work this season, in my opinion. Do you believe in Justin Fields? Are you a truther? Type B for believe or type D for don't. We need to have a clear answer of that after this season. And if we don't, then the answer is probably he did not live up uh, to the uh, – level of expectation that we need him to be for believe D for don't let me know what you guys think all right from Justin Fields to some scheduling stuff are the Chiefs ducking the Bears in uh in 2023 obviously they're going to play each other we already know that but the big report for a couple months has been that the Chiefs don't want to play the Bears in Germany that's obviously uh, led to lots of speculation here's Peter King uh writing in his article saying uh, explaining uh, this situation. He says, when a team gives up one of its home games to play overseas, it has the option of requesting to the league one home game on its schedule the team does not want moved. I'm told Kansas City requested that the Chicago game not be played overseas. So Bears Twitter is like, are the Chiefs scared of the Chicago Bears? 
they're not scared of the Bears. You think they're you think they're just ducking a team that won three games last year? It's fun to make that argument, but a way more logical answer is what the Bears blog has said here, and he's actually mentioned this for a while. He says, anybody been telling you this for months? Teams hate losing the Bears from their home schedule. It's a huge moneymaker for the city. And people are probably sitting there, well, how does that work? What does that mean? How do the Bears, uh, you know, just generate all this revenue for uh, cities on the road? Well, they're a national fan base. They travel. Fan bases go. So think of it this way. If you're traveling all over the place uh, to a city as an opposing fan base, uh, that city can charge more uh, for hotels, for drinks at bars, et cetera. And that's the point that uh, DBB uh, later made in a separate tweet as well. Uh, he kind of just went through a hypothetical of saying, hey, what if 10,000 Bears fans travel uh, to Kansas City for the game? Uh, let's say hotel rooms are X amount per night. They sell all those out. You can make you know millions of dollars that weekend alone as a home team in home city. Uh, Jacksonville's not bringing that to you, uh, if that makes sense. So teams already uh, don't want to lose a home game to play international. They accept it because growing the brand of the NFL is important, yada, yada, yada. Uh, but they definitely don't want to lose national games at home. Like the Chiefs would much rather play Carolina uh, in Germany than they would Chicago because Carolina at Arrowhead Stadium is not going to have 20% of the fans there. Chicago might, though. Bears fans are going to travel. We all know that. So uh, that's the reasoning. Uh, it's fun to kind of get into the uh, – uh, the trash talk side of it, but uh, I really don't think that's the case. I think the, the financials are way more of a reason uh, to why Kansas City would request that. Will the NFL honor that request? That remains to be seen. We'll find out when the NFL schedule drops on Thursday. Now, where would you rather play the Chiefs? Type KC if you want to play them in Kansas City at Arrowhead Stadium or type G for Germany. I think from a competitive standpoint, you'd rather play them in Germany uh, on a neutral field, but uh, you know, if you want to travel to KC for some uh, Kansas City barbecue and it's an easier game to get to I understand that as well KC for Kansas City or G for Germany all right guys I told you off the top turn on that notification bell after you subscribe and select all that way you never miss a video here on the channel of course to do that you got to subscribe so if you haven't subbed uh, that is how you do it and uh, we will see you next time here on Chicago Bears now